there's this incredible painting of our dog, Tony. We have a little paper mache Tony ornament, Tony as a bug. Tony on our bed, a portrait of Tony. This is one of my favorite portraits of me and Tony. Hey Skillshare, come on in. Hi, my name is Grace Michelli. I'm an artist and author, and we are in my Upper East Side apartment and studio. I have been here for two years, and I live here with my girlfriend Margot and my Chihuahua Tony. I make comics, I do commercial work, I also paint murals, do animations. Throughout my career, I have always had my studio workspace in my home. In order to afford an apartment in Manhattan, I'm not able to have a dedicated workspace. Living in New York City, often compromises have to be made and wanting to live in Manhattan, which for sure inspires me so much, space is just more limited. The size is definitely a challenge, but I think that it forces you to think creatively about how to use the space and has also stopped me from collecting a bunch of stuff that I don't need. When we first started setting up, decorating the apartment, it really was a collaboration between my girlfriend and I. We wanted to make sure there was color, there was lots of art from our friends and families. My grandparents were glass collectors, so it's really cool to have some pieces of studio glass from their collection. My mom was also a glass artist. It feels really connected to my history. It's just really important to surround yourself with art or other visual references that kind of remind you of the root of your creativity and your personal artistic practice. This is my bedroom where my day begins. Here I have some framed paper that I marbled, which is a new developing art practice of mine. My girlfriend Margot made this desk, which is really great to work at if I wanna take a break from drawing or doing emails in the other room. And it's very light, so it can easily be kind of moved around. Over here on the wall, there's this incredible painting of our dog, Tony, that a Seattle-based artist, Kelly Lyles, made. Here is a clock that Margot made. It is made of wood and beach trash that she collected. And then we have a bunch of plants in the room. Living in the city, there's not a ton of nature around, so we definitely try to keep as many plants in the house just to like, you know, get the, the color, the life, but I'll be honest, I do not take care of them. I'm terrible with plants, that all goes to my girlfriend. Here we have Tony on our bed. He doesn't sleep here, his house is over there, but I just wanna point out um, a little PSA for anyone in a couple, cannot recommend two separate comforters enough. Total game changer. So now we are standing in my kitchen. Um, we have a poster of Italy. Margot and I are both Italian. This is a portrait by the artist Alabaster Pizzo of Margot and I's animals and then Tony as a bug. Here is the kitchen table. It is an outdoor table from Ikea. Since I started grad school about a year ago, I have expanded my art practice to partially take place here in the kitchen. I come into the kitchen when I wanna use different mediums, like for paper marbling, or if I'm gonna do warm up drawing exercises, 
and I want to be more physical, just kind of you know spread my arms and make big messy marks. There's so much more space, and I'm not gonna ruin anything important if I make a mess. On the floor here, we have a mosaic floor cloth that my mom created sometime in the 90s. Basically, it is, yeah, like a stamped canvas floor cloth in the style of a mosaic. It's really cool to see how a lot of my illustration work kind of mimics or references some of my mom's early work, including like flat illustrated objects that are kind of floating in space. Here is the fridge where we just love to hang up, uh, you know, cards that friends have sent us. I have always been in the habit of collecting postcards of art from museums. I think that's like a really accessible way to surround yourself with art if you can't afford larger pieces. Up here is a print of a drawing by Wesley Willis of Chicago, which is where I was born. We also have a clock done in the style of Ram Dass. Be here now, definitely something we try to live by. Now we are in my living room slash studio space slash office. Over here are some studio glass paperweights that were part of my grandparents' collection. A really nice reminder of that, you know, personal art history, artistic lineage. Over here, we have one of my favorite portraits, I think ever done of me. It is by an artist named Lauren MacArthur who works out of Summertime Gallery which is a studio and art gallery where I facilitate a few open studios a week, working with artists with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We have this beautiful batik flag created by a family friend, Denise Fogelman, uh, which covers our TV. It's just really nice to not see the screens uh, when they're not in use. So yeah, you know, the TV essentially becomes a work of art. And hanging in the window here is a stained glass piece that I created during a workshop at Urban Glass last summer. It was really cool to experiment with a medium that is part of my, you know, family's artistic lineage. On the wall here, I have some of my artwork. Um, this is a comic that I created for my book featuring the one and only Tony. This is an earlier illustration of mine back when my studio space was my bedroom. And then here are two skateboards I designed for Impala. And we also have a knockoff Eames coat rack. We have arrived at my studio, which is this corner of the living room. My desk is here with my desktop computer. And then I have my books. This is a custom shelf that Margot created with a light that was built to slide into the brackets. It was definitely important to have a light here because this desk is backlit and I will take any Zoom meetings here. So to be able to like have a light on my face was really important. Here we have a hand shelf. Again, another piece of furniture created by my girlfriend, Margot. I saw it, uh, I saw the, the hand part uh, just kind of leaning up against a wall at her studio. And I was like, what is that? I want that at home. She brought it back and kind of made it into a shelf, which was always the intention for the piece. The desk here is another 
furniture piece from Ikea. I knew that I was going to be really limited with space, uh, kind of, you know, in both ways. So the desk needed to be short so that when I sit in the chair, you know, it doesn't block the path. And this chair is by Branch. For years, I would just kind of get the cheapest desk chair I could find, but investing a little bit in a chair that, you know, some days I will be sitting in for six or, you know, eight hours uh, has really, really helped, you know, my back pain and my posture. Here is another one of the screen covers. This is actually a crochet piece. Uh, done by my great grandmother in Sicily, which is which is really cool. Um, and it covers my iMac. I use my desktop iMac when I am editing an illustration or a comic. I do my drawings on my iPad in Procreate, and then I will use Photoshop if I'm making an animation or if I'm like laying out uh, a larger comic, you know, to kind of see all of the panels together. Here is my iPad that I use. Um, I think it is, again, really important to be mindful of your posture when you're when you're drawing. So I like to set my iPad up like this so that I'm not totally hunched over all day when I'm drawing. There are certain writing utensils that I'm also pretty passionate about. I really love Bic mechanical pencils, also jelly roll pens, but the size 10 so that it's nice and thick. You can, it's actually legible. And then I also am a fan of Le Pen and I have this really cool rock uh, Apple pencil holder that my girlfriend found on the beach in Santa Barbara with like a perfectly sized hole in it. On this blue shelf, I have all of my tools and materials that I use as an illustrator and then also uh, in school for art therapy. And here I have just a lot of you know, paints and crayons, basically inexpensive art materials that I can really play around with, experiment with. I have an online shop where I sell stickers and other merchandise. So I have all of my stickers stored here for when I ship them. And then I have uh, a printer. I'm really big into printing off lists, printing off calendars, which really, really helps me to stay organized. I think as a freelancer, sometimes it can be challenging when you're juggling, you know, five different jobs that all have different deadlines. So staying organized, whether that's with a planner or like a printed out calendar uh, is super helpful for me. Once in a while, I will do an in-person pop-up here in New York. And when I do that, I have uh, prints that are usually for sale. So. Here are uh, some of my illustrations as prints. And over here, I have my noise canceling headphones. I am very easily distracted. So these are a must, whether I'm drawing or doing work for school. Decorating my living space, my bedroom has been a really fun project for me pretty much my whole life. As a teenager, my mom gave me free reign of my bedroom as long as I did all the work. It's always been something that I have been drawn to, to just uh, surround myself with what I'm passionate about. Thanks for stopping by Skillshare. See you later.